Hello to everybody. My name is Rodrigo Alonso. I'm going to present this work that it is about how different wave systems that coexist on a coastal site contributes to the moving, movement of sediment along the coast. And the work uh, was carried out with Sebastian Solari as part of our research work at the Universidad de la República in Uruguay. Uh, so the, the, the presentation will, will, will follow a standard outline. So let's start with the introduction. I don't have to go too far to convince an audience of coastal engineers about the importance or the relevance of long short statement transport. Let me uh, only highlight that long short statement transport is governed by the near shoreway climate. In that sense, the motivation of this work is to take advantage of the new wave hindcasts that provide a high quality and a high resolution a wave spectral data all along the Uruguayan coast, the, the Atlantic part, and also the, the, the coast in the Rio de la Plata estuary. And based on this data, a wave climate analysis were performed. And in this, in this analysis, a wave systems were identified and characterized. So the idea of this work is to expand, expand this, this analysis to include a, a important magnitude for coastal management as it is the longshore sediment transport. And the work will be focused on the Atlantic, on the Atlantic coast. It is interesting the Atlantic coast because it presents a multimodal uh, wave climate. No? Uh, sea states that coexist uh, local waves with wind, wind seas with one, two or more than two swells or uh, frequently occur. And uh, this is uh, reflected on a multimodal climate uh, where that we can identify uh, three uh, wave systems. These three wave systems are local waves, wind seas, and also two, two groups of swells, the systems that we call eastern swells are generated in this part of the South Atlantic Ocean. They are mostly generated by the anticyclone related with the semi-permanent uh, height of the South Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the other groups of swells, the southern swells, are generated in these zones, uh, mostly generated by the extratropical cyclones that develops in these zones. So it is inter this diagram is interesting. It's a good uh, presentation of the, of, the, of the wave climate. It shows the mean wave energy flux just composed in these three wave systems. Um, one observation is that the black arrow, that is the total uh, mean wave, wave energy flux in this, in this calculated using the, the wave behind data in this node, the A2. Uh, so the, the black arrow and also the sky blue that correspond to the sea waves that is behind the black arrow are the both both arrows are uh, both uh, fluxes they uh, have a direction the, 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 the orientation is almost uh, aligned with the perpendicular to the coast another observation is that the largest the largest uh, fraction of the of the of the uh, the largest fraction correspond to the southern swells and eastern swells uh, presents a smaller fraction than the southern ones and an obliquity that is almost 45 degrees with, with the coast. Well, uh, the objectives following was true. In a third place, uh, we want to analyze the difference between estimates uh, launch of sediment transport of uh, based based on integral parameters and an, an approach based on spectral partitions. A second objective is was to analyze the contribution of the different wave systems to the to the uh, launch of sediment transport dynamics. 
In this slide, the tools used are presented, but it is important to clarify where are the free uh, uh, long short segment transport rates defined and used. And they are identified with a sub index. The sub index int refer to the long short segment transport estimates uh, from integral parameters. Oh, we, the sub index part uh, refers to the transport rate estimates from spectral partitions. And long short segment transport per systems is calculated in a similar way than the approach from partitions, but we, for, we consider uh, only the partitions that belongs to a specific system. So if, if we calculate the long short segment transport of southern swells, we calculate in a similar way, way that the long short segment transport from partitions, but we only consider the partitions that uh, belongs to the southern swells. Let's go to the results. Uh, if we look the difference of those of these two approaches, based on integral parameters and based on partitions, we can observe sensible difference. Uh, the approach based on partitions is larger than the approach uh, based on, on, on integral parameters when we look the gross transport. And if we look the net transport, we, we, we see that the difference uh, are sensible to a point that present a different sign. What does it, does it mean? Uh, uh, it means that uh, if, we, if we use one approach, uh, we obtain a transport to, to one direction, direction and, we use, and if we use the other approach, we are, we are going to obtain transport in the opposite direction no? for, for the same data. Eh? But if, if we look the, the correlation between these two estimates, the correlation is high at annual scale and also at a monthly scale. So uh, that means that both estimates vary over time in a similar wave, but they present different magnitudes. If we look the internal variability, uh, we observe the, this, the, the same pattern for the two approaches, that it is very interesting what, what we see. And the two approaches uh, uh, validate this, the, the, this, 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 this dynamics. We, we observe that uh, periods of, of negative transport alternate with periods with positive transport. And we also observe a, a negative trend, a negative long-term trend. What does it mean? It means that negative transport is transport to the north. So uh, the, there is a trend of increased transport to the north. Uh, this alternation in, in, in transport from one year to to another means that one year we can have transport to the south and for a different year we can have transport to, to the north. If we look the annual cycle, uh, we also observe the same pattern uh, using both, both approaches. And there is a, a, a There is a well well defined cycle with uh, negative values from April to July. So from April to July, we have transport to the north, and we have positive values from September to December. So in this period, from September to December, we have transport to, to the to the south. Okay, if we look the, the contribution of the dif different wave, wave systems, 
here we have the wind seas, the southern swells and the eastern swells with the transport per system normalized with the transport, uh, the total transport, the total gross transport. And we can observe that there is a balance between the, tra the, the, the transport from the two uh, swells groups. Despite eastern swells are less energetic than southern swells, their capacity to move sediment along the coast is very similar. You know, there is a balance between the transport uh, uh, of, of these two systems of swells. So the southern swells transport uh, sediment to, to, to the north and the eastern swells transport sediment to the, to the east. And the, the capacity to trans transport sediments is, is, is similar. Despite uh, wind seas looks a uh, small arrow, what we look if we uh, see the internal variability of the long shell segment transport persistence, that is in the yellow curve and the red curve that correspond to swells, the negative trend is not observed. So what the what uh, the the, the, the system, the wave system that is behind the negative trends seems to be the, the wind seas. No? The wind seas present also the, the negative trends. So the, long, the negative trend is attributable to the wind seas. Um, looking the annual cycle, that we look is if that for from April to July, uh, the 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 red both 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 the three systems present the the more negative values what means that that in terms of of, of the soil systems means that the soil system is, is the capacity of transport sediment of the soil the southern soil system increase in this period from, from in this cold, cold season for the, for the southern hemisphere from April to, to July. And the capacity of transport segment from the eastern swells decrease in this period and increase from September to December. And the opposite occur with the southern system. The, the, its capacity to transport sediment decrease between the September and December. So this lag in the capacity of transport sediment of these two systems of Suez accentuates the annual cycle of the local transport. So conclusions. Uh, difference between initial sediment transport a, a, a from integral parameters and from partitions. Well, what we observe is that they vary over time presenting the same patterns and trends, but with considerably difference in magnitude to the extent of providing different transport directions. By, by the analysis uh, by wave systems, we observe that there is a balance between the transport from uh, southern swells and transport from eastern swells. Despite southern swells occur more frequently and with higher energy than eastern swells due to the obliquity of the later, the capacity is similar. The long shore sediment transport of wind sea is responsible of the long term trend identified for the total transport. And the transport from eastern swells increase in the period of September to December and decrease in April to July, while the opposite happens for long shell sediment transport of, the, of southern swells. And this lag between both, both swell systems accentuates the total sediment transport annual cycle. So thank you for your attentions. And here are the references if you want to take a look.